Hey everybody, back on projectors. Today we have an Optima that was sent in by a viewer because they were having an issue with it. Pay attention to the packaging. That's some nice packaging. When you ship it, always make sure they're shipped well. Then they were kind enough to include the screws they had removed. making sure we got everything. So we have, here we go, one of those regulatory models. It's a, uh, I'm trying to remember what it really is. Oh, I forget. These are good projectors though. Now the reported problem is that after replacing the color wheel, they're getting a uh, shadow or a line on the side. So we're gonna check over the uh, color wheel and see how, how it's installed, make sure it's installed straight. Um, they're usually pretty straightforward, but you know it's not uncommon for folks to have trouble with it. They can be difficult if you're not used to working on these. And it looks like they cleaned it too. These are usually much dirtier inside. go. I got that out. Let's see. That's a that's a Chinese lamp. It's not an Osram. I'm actually going to be surprised if this... Oh no. It's got an okay coating. I take that back. Wow. The wheel looks okay from here, but let's, let's see, did he put any of these back in? Nope, all the screws are out, so that means this top should just pop off. Yeah, there we go. There's the keyboard. Some burn dust. I mean, this thing ran hot. Wow. Man, these HD 141s, they really have simplified construction. There's no more upper main board. The main board is all there now. There's the DLP down there. There's really not much to these anymore. There's our zoom. Nice wide focus ring. Oh, whoops. So I guess you had a little trouble getting that color wheel latched in. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a little chewed up. I can replace that connector. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna pull the, uh, pull the optical unit out. Nope. I think this plastic has to come out too. Nope. 
so there's a screw here and there's another one here Tell you, Optima is really optimized, or I guess I don't know if this is Delta. We have to see who built this, but whoever built this really has optimized design and manufacturing to uh, simplify construction immensely. Oh, and that's the door switch. Okay. And the door switch goes over to the power supply, which I will unthread. Wow. Even the uh, the lamp fan it's using a combined exhaust fan, lamp blower fan using that duct. That's, uh, that's clever. Then we have a couple screws here. Getting there. Looks like this whole assembly lifts out. Main board and everything, I think. There's a bunch of screws going through into the plastic base. So I am going to just take all those out. And we'll see if that releases everything. Oh, there's another one. Oh, some broken plastic falling out. Okay, so the power supply is now loose, so that may have to come out first. Disconnect the low voltage power and then the ballast control, and this should, yep. Wow. So we have an integrated power supply and ballast board. There's the output to the lamp. There's a power factor correction. Well, actually, we'll do it this way. Power comes in here. Bunch of conditioning. Power factor correction to create the 380. Plus, it feeds directly into a bunch of MOSFETs and a controller for the ballast right here. And then we have the low voltage over here. CQC, I'm guessing that means Cortronic quality control. So maybe this is made by Cortronic. We have some ballast info. Oh, and we have 75.8V. And usually when it's 75 dot or a number dot something, it's a Cortronic part number. So this is probably Cortronic. But there's no problem with that, so we'll set that over here. This is where we want to pay attention. And I see a screw that I missed. see if it there we go yep and here is the culprit and 
And here's the color wheel, and that looks okay. Although it looks like it might not be sitting right. So that loosens the whole color wheel. That's really not what I want. I want this metal piece out of the way. Yeah. All right, so let's take this screw, this black screw. There we go, now you can see it. Let's take out that one. Then there's another one on the other side. And that is releasing the whole metal piece. That's what, there we go. This is what I was hoping to do. Get this off as one piece. And then we can look at the wheel. That looks fine. Set that up there. And set this off. This is what I wanted to check. The uh, integrator. I wanted to make sure that wasn't out of position. It doesn't seem. Well, let me get my flashlight. Alright, so I think it might be an integrator adjustment, adjusting the angle of this. It seems like it should be more like that. The screws are really in far. I feel like it should be more like... were these do look like they may have been adjusted just because the scrape marks in the screws but I can't be sure you see how see how that's wobbly as long as it's not broken we're in good shape but I also want to check in this lens and make sure we have no other problems inside I'm pretty sure we're good, but I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work uh, this way back first, and then we'll put it together and start uh, troubleshooting it with a picture. Once I verify there's nothing, you know, blatant in the way. Seems okay. And that all seems reasonably okay. Oh, wait a minute. I think that lens might be crooked or wrong. Ugh. That black this guy right here that lens I don't think that's in right 
All right, well, first let me put this back in because I need this to help hold that lens in place. So let's get these out of the way so that we can get to that lens and make sure that's in right. It just doesn't look like it's sitting the way it's supposed to. That lens focuses the light uh, from the lamp onto the chip. And if that lens isn't straight or aimed at what it should be, you'll get all sorts of weird things going on. I've even seen those lenses burn from getting dust on them at one point a lot of companies use polycarbonate lenses and they would get dust build up and then they'd get hot and they'd get a little you know bubble and then it would just take off from there I don't think he had this out though. I don't, he didn't, I don't recall him saying it was out, but it sure looks like it was. that's the right direction the large side is supposed to be towards the mirror there's the mirror unless that slipped those in there you know I wonder if it just wasn't straight you can see it's got a little wobble to it and that's a tough call Get that tape out of the way Supposed to sit like that. Okay, so that's just a mask that the, uh, I guess, keeps that. Let's give it a little scrubby scrub.
let's see if this sits back on. Yep, and it even dropped in where the uh, lens should be, so that is in the right spot. So, so far, it's looking like the light tunnel isn't in the right spot. Which is good because getting these uh, lens parts is difficult. There we go. go and I'll keep the dust and light out <clears throat> and then this guy this fella here we got to fix him okay so this is a donor board I want to get this off but I don't want to heat it from the top in case I melt the plastic so instead, I'm going to run these, running this really hot at like 430 some degrees Celsius. It's way too hot for plastic. But I'm hoping it'll melt the solder from underneath. And I have more donor boards if this doesn't work. And I'm trying to do is just heat it from underneath. shit falling off the bottom. There we go. All right, so I got that off. I cleaned it. And it did not take any damage. Nope quite happy oh that's good all right so let's get the donor board out of the way and let's get set up for the other one okay so I put a small metal shield <coughs> pardon me around the connector to help protect the rest of the main board because I am going to hit this with some severe heat so I can get it off quick oh a little too much heat.
And the smoke is just flux. Man, that plastic's just shredding. Okay. Well, now that that's off, I can use the iron to clean up the rest of it. So, let's move that. All right, I'm happy with that. Now, I'm gonna put our new our new part on, that guy. Let's use a crock clip to hold this until I solder it. Okay, so I uh, took an old color wheel wire and I scraped up the end and plugged it in and then check continuity between the different pins. So going from the test point, let's 
So if I go from, let's see, and last but not least, the wire I didn't scrape up that well, but here we go. So let's put this back in now. So now we need to deal with this. You can see that's missing the end. And I also saw this floating around inside that goes on the back of it. So what we want to do is you want to cut this straight. We could switch it on this end, but I don't want to mess with the glass. This is a lot safer. So we're just gonna cut it straight. Yeah, it's a little wrinkled there and it got a little bit past where that's bent. I'll use the one as a guide. And then we're gonna scrape back just a little bit of that. And then we'll stick that to the back. Actually, I should probably do that first. I'm gonna stick this to the back and then we'll scrape that stuff off. Okay. You get some tape to hold this down. Now the fun part, it's a good thing this is long. Put a second piece of tape so that I don't go back too far. Go there. That's the trick, you gotta go one direction. Just take your time. Razors will work, all kinds of stuff will work. You don't want it to be too sharp, because you'll cut it, but you want it be sharp enough to grab the paint and rip the paint off the surface. That's really what we're doing. You can see that copper starting to show through. I'm sure there's better ways to do this. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with this. There we go. <coughs> Pardon me. That should work just fine. Sure, we have enough. Let's see, it's gonna go now. All right, so I got everything situated there. Next, we will remount the color wheel. Because the more I look at this, the more I realize that, well, one, the camera wasn't centered, but two, this all goes together as a sub-assembly and then goes on the projector. So, get that back into position and... That one. Then I 
I gotta reclaim this screw because I put the wrong screw there. the look of that there's the optic assembly and let's get chassis let's see if this just drops in like a oh actually I'm gonna you hit this with some air real quick all right so let's see this should should just drop in looking good slide back on just want to make sure that can wait on this Those are in. Now we got these uh, little guys down the back. Oops. Still think it's amazing how little is inside this projector. Plug our low voltage power in. Get our lamp power wire over there and our ballast control.
All right, and I noticed that this was probably installed, so I'm gonna put it back. That's good. <clears throat> all right, for all intents and purposes, it's essentially ready to go. Let's put this bracket in. Put this feller in and see what happens. Oh, I see. So when you flip this over. See that locks the connector in. That's pretty good. Clever. Clever indeed. Door switch. Um, can I tape it down? Maybe. I love gaff tape. Alright, so it's taped down. get some power all right so let's see what happens I'm not sure if that color wheels facing the right way or not let's see and when I say facing the right way I mean the uh, wires I may have to redo that and flip it my little yeah probably no bueno see how it's flickering We got Optima though, that's a good sign. But that color wheel, I'm going to fix that wire up, no problem. Okay, so let's get ready to test this. I inverted the, uh, the cable for the color wheel. Uh, in fact, I'll show you that after we test everything. I ended up pulling the uh, door switch out and wrapping tape around it because the tape kept sliding off from the heat of the lamp. So, this is a, uh, let me get something light to put against the wall. Alright, I got a nice piece of white foam color wheel spun up properly you can tell by the sound and then there's the logo 
And there's the picture. It's got, there's the shadow up top. Let's focus. Zoom. Right there. I'm going to fix that. test pattern. Wow, this uh, this is terrible. Let's just go with the wall. There we are. This is what I wanted to see. That is most likely the integrator. Let's see. Yep. Might have to take it out. Oops. Yeah, it's just shifted inside there. I'm gonna have to pull that optic assembly out, I think. See it shift? I think the uh, the spring that pushes it back isn't pushing it back. Alright, here's another one. It's a different model, but these screws push in and then angle the thing. This one's, the, the one in here just isn't angled right. So let's shut it down. And once this cools, we'll pull the lamp out. And then I'll pull that optic assembly out and we'll take a look at that light tunnel. I'm glad the color wheel's in good shape though because that was concerning to me. Now my guess here is that this ran hot, and because it ran hot, it made the spring inside there get soft and push out of the way. So what I hope we can do is just bend the spring back into position. It should be that straightforward. It should be. Famous last words. This is where I think the issue is. I think these springs are not in position. The 
fact that this little plate didn't just pop up in the air when I loosened that other screw is pretty telling. There's probably not much spring tension pushing down on it. Let's see if I can just get away with loosening this one. Nah, it looks like it has to come out. Yeah. Oops. Alright, so the light tunnel where the uh, color wheel does have to be disconnected. Let's get Getting that thing loose is a chore. There we are. Get that pin. All right, good. So that looks okay. Glue is fine. You can see where the screws push on it. So that's what these are supposed to do. They're supposed to push back. So, hopefully something as simple as like that. So bending those springs tight will push the tunnel back flat so that when I loosen or when I tighten the screws it has something pushing back against them because the screws push this way and that way and the spring needs to push back the same way. I think they just got soft and didn't let it move. sure that pin drops into the hole.
The only thing I'm wondering is if maybe that little tab inside there, if that should be on the other side, like if this whole thing is upside down. I don't think it is, though. Well, yeah, let's find out. Let's pop it back in and see what happens. I'm just going to put two screws in for now. Every time I put them all back in, I ended up having to take them all out again. And so watch, this time I'll get it aligned. And I could have left them all in. Just FYI, this ground usually goes in the bottom, but the uh, plastic in the bottom is broken, so I'm just going to screw it up here for the time being just to drain the static. It actually looks better already. There we go. Now the uh, rolling that you're seeing is not visible in person. There's that one. that one. Now the rest of that looks like dust. Yeah, there's like a dust blob there and a dust blob there. So maybe I'll blow it out with some air and we'll see if that does anything. But more importantly, we've got a good picture. Let's uh, go to the grid. And that's black. There's the white pattern. So we're in good shape. I'm going to uh, blow out that little bit there and then get all the pieces put back together and then we'll try it with it closed up. All right, so I have all those pieces back in. Let's get, uh, I should have held off on this screw. 
I need to screw the door switch back in. And I can do it from an angle, but this would just make it a lot easier. It slides in on those pins and that clip. together and we'll wrap that wire tie around it like that and just slide that down through there, door switch is there, this all looks good. I'm going to put in the uh, knockoff lamp. I actually don't know if this lamp's any good. I think it might be running dim. I may uh, drop a proper bulb in here and see if uh, if it looks better. <coughs> Pardon me. But I think we're in good shape. Let's put the uh, lens back on. Now that's in, and now we have our focus ring, and then we have our zoom right here. So I will need to, oops, need to line this up. See that? That grabs it. So put that like that, and that should catch it. So let's put in the keyboard. Oops. Hard to do one-handed. And also, one of the sides on this keyboard latch is damaged. These little plastic things do not take much. Uh, don't take much. So I'm going to help it a little and just fold that over so that it kind of helps hold it in. Then I can set. All right, that's on. The uh, plastic that these screws go in is all shredded on the bottom, so I thought I'd get away with mounting it up here, but that sticks up too high. So instead, let's see. Let's see what options we have here. And I tried gluing one of them, but I wasn't very happy with 
how it ended up. So let's see if this will screw in. Oh, okay. Looks like the glue worked on that side. The other side totally blew out though. that in. Hmm. All right. Much better spot. I mean, that's really where it should be anyway. I just thought there might be enough clearance. So this is way better. Let's put Mr. Keyboard back in. And I'll do the same thing just to help that clip not pop loose. It's like this. Yeah. We got our zoom. Oh yeah, it's all popping right back down. Turn that clutch way down. parts. There we go. Nope. Just want to hold that tight. Feel for the plastic edge. There we go. So I don't want to cut new threads if I can help it. Sometimes that's just going to happen, but but if you backspin it a little, you can usually feel where the uh, thread starts. Two more. That's good. Last but not least, there we go. There it is. And of course, the lamp door. Get that out of the way. Like that. Yeah, I don't think this, uh, I don't think this bulb is any good. I think this is a very not good bulb. I'm going to 
because there's that schmutz and normally a bulb will kind of shine past that so I might try another lamp and just see what happens I mean, it's not bad but it's not great either about a 3.6 but the important issue of the edges is good now so I'm gonna call that the end of this particular repair and then we'll do another video uh, where I compare the uh, the lamps and put a uh, put a bright like a new lamp in here with a real bulb I believe it's an Osram and uh, we'll see what happens and I'll set up my uh, lumen meter and we'll see if we're getting the same uh, if we're getting more output from the other one and if all these little spots go away because a good lamp should shine around them those should not cause any issues we're gonna call it on this one at least for this now this may the uh, next video may be a partial cleaning video if it turns out that little blob is somewhere else uh, but for now we're gonna call this done if you have any questions about your Optima, whether it's a 141 or similar, stick it in the comments or you can email me. And um, yeah, if uh, you decide to work on your own, just take your time, go slow. Always, like this fella did, keep your screws in something, very smart. Made it real easy to send to me, he already had the screws in there, so I could just use them. And uh, I guess aside from that, thank you for watching.